My name is Frankie Trejo, and I'm going to be talking to you guys about Yuri Bronfenbrenner's Ecological Systems Theory. Bronfenbrenner was a scholarly American psychologist known for his child development of the Ecological Systems Theory. Bronfenbrenner was born in 1917 in Moscow. Um, but at the age of six, he um, moved to the United States with his parents. He was influenced by his father, um, who was a clinical pathologist at the New York State Institution for the Mentally Ill. Um, he was an extreme advocate for children and families. He um, obtained his uh, undergraduate degree at Cornell University, and then went on to complete his master's at Harvard in developmental psychology, and then he got his PhD um, from the University of Michigan. After college, Bronfenbrenner joined the Army as a psychologist, and then from there, he spent most of the, um, the rest of his uh, career as a professor at Cornell University. Bronfenbrenner, um, he died at the age of 88 in his New York home due to um, complications with diabetes. This is the ecological systems theory. This is basically the framework um, for the philosophy of um, Yuri Bronfenbrenner. Um, he believed that there were four layers, the macrosystem, mesosystem, exosystem, and macrosystem in a child's environment um, that influences and shapes the growth and their development. The macrosystem is the child's immediate environment uh, surrounding the individual. Examples of that would be their family, uh, their school, religion, their neighborhood, and their community. The next layer is the mesosystem, which is the interaction between two microsystems. Um, this just proposes that children not only develop by influence from their close environment, surrounding situations are just as influential. The third layer of Bronfenbrenner's theory is the exosystem, which is the environment that the individual is not directly involved with, but can still be impacted. Um, the exosystem basically is anything that doesn't directly impact the child, but can have a, an indirect influence. For example, um, a parent's workplace does not directly affect a child. Um, so if the mother has to go to work, that's not going to directly affect the child. However, if the mother has to work overtime, the um, child might miss their parents or miss their mother or um, not receive the help uh, with their education, like their homework or things like that um, for that day. So that would directly affect the parent, the child. I'm sorry. The last layer of Bronfenbrenner's theory is the macro system, which is the larger cultural context. Uh, some examples of this would be um, if there's a poor neighborhood versus a wealthy neighborhood, um, they may be influenced differently based upon those. Um, maybe religious beliefs or political views. All of these things will play a factor in how the child is um, influenced throughout their growth and development of life. This is a quote that I found from Yuri Bronfenbrenner. It says, in order to develop normally, a child requires progressively more complex joint activity with one or more adults who have an irrational emotional relationship with the child. Somebody's got to be crazy about that kid. That's number one, first, last, and always. Um, I also found a conversation with Yuri Bronfenbrenner and an executive editor of Educational Leadership. And another thing that I thought was important, Bronfenbrenner says, 
The main problem in our society is that people are expected to raise children in their spare time. Work comes first. As you can see, this is definitely not what Bronfenbrenner um, agreed with. He agreed that um, children should work hand in hand or side by side of their parents to learn certain skills and tasks um, required for these kind of um, activities or daily living skills. Um, he was definitely um, an advocate that work was not as important as family involvement in, in their children's education. These are my applicable thoughts. They are also um, statistics that I found online. So it says children with engaged parents are more likely to earn higher grades or test scores. They are more than likely to develop self-confidence and motivation in the classroom. They are more than likely to have better social skills and classroom behavior. They are also less likely to have low self-esteem need redirection in the classroom, and they're also less likely to develop behavioral issues. I can relate to these apl applicable thoughts and statistics. Um, my son, my nine-year-old son, was in a district that did not necessarily participate in family um, or parent involvement. Um, and my son would come home every day with some type of behavioral issue written in his planner. And when I would um, question or get concerned about it, he would cry and misbehave. Um, you could tell that his confidence in himself decreased, his grades decreased, and the overall situation, um, it just wasn't a good one. Once he got to this new district that we put him in, the teacher immediately has um, a list of things that she needs the parents to help with and, and she engages the parents. Um, and you can just tell that uh, the difference in my son. He is an A student there and he loves himself, he loves school. Um, so it's just a great experience and you can see the difference in how engaging the parents and the families in your, um, in your child's education or your student's education can greatly impact that. These are some examples of how the ecological systems theory relates to the PPR standards um, and the theory's relevancy to education. Um, so, in the PPR responsibilities, it says that teachers are to engage families um, in various aspects of the educational program. They're to interact appropriately with families and include those that have diverse characteristics, backgrounds, and needs. They're to communicate effectively with families. They're also to conduct effective conference with parents or um, other legal caregivers. They are to effectively use support resources, such as the community to enhance family involvement. And the last thing to me is the most important. They're also supposed to analyze ways um, in which factors that in the home and the community can impact the student's learning. And then they're supposed to seek and create plans um, to enhance student learning based upon all of those cultural factors. And these are the references that I used for um, the information and all of the images. Thanks.